So hello, hello everyone. Good morning. And as Riani said, my name is Piotr. The, the surname is Golkiewicz. It's difficult. I'm based in Poland and uh, I'm customer consultant uh, for life science solutions, which means not only for chemistry solutions, but also for any other life science solution. And uh, this could be, for example, biomedical uh, database like Embase or any other, any other product. Today we talk about chemistry, about reaxis. Um, I'm reaxis, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm chemist by education, uh, sure. but I worked as a researcher many, 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 many years ago. Uh, so my chemistry knowledge is already a little bit, uh, you know, outdated maybe or, or or not refreshed. But I still think I, I know enough to show you how reaxis works. So this is not a chemistry session uh, as such. This is a the, the, the session where I try to, to, to show you how reaxis works, where to look for what, and, and then I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you immediately will grab the idea and, and see how you can search uh, for your use cases. Um, I got from Riani and Henrik, I, I received a, a list of your projects, and, and based on them, I prepared some examples as well. So I hope this will be uh, also helpful. But let's start from a couple of slides where I want to tell you very, very briefly what Reaxis is, just to, to give you an idea and then remind what it is and what are its possibilities. Then we go online, and then I show you the basics, 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 and then we go into use cases. So that's the program for today. Riani suggested to do it in one hour. I'm a bit afraid it might take a couple of minutes longer, and I hope this is okay if we make a bit longer. As for perfectly okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And as for the session, of course, I will try to go through the program, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, you can use either unmute your, yourself uh, on Zoom or use, uh, use a chat option. I will try to, uh, to have, have an eye on, on this and, and, and check if there will be any questions, I'll try to answer them as we go. Uh, so I really want this to be a very practical session and that you, you can get you know, the benefits and you know how to use it for your specific program. So let's go on. So Reaxis, what it is, and uh, oops, sorry, Reaxis is um, mm, Reaxis is a database which is based on all databases on Melin, which was inorganic book of inorganic chemistry, a Balstein, which was book of organic chemistry. This, this is still 19th century. Reaxis was launched in 2009, relaunched in 2016. As you know it today, it was launched 2016. Uh, edit RMC, which is Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry module, React edit commercial substances last year, and uh, uh, and last, and sorry, this was two years ago, and I already forget that we are in 2022. Uh, two years ago, we launched Reaxis Commercial Substances, and uh, last year we launched uh, patent uh, expansion, so now we have coverage of 105 patent offices. We just crossed 30 million patents mark a month ago, so uh, we have doubled the number of patents uh, than our nearest competitors. So uh, this is this is a huge achievement. And this was actually our weak point, in my opinion. Now I can say it, <laughs> uh, but we have already uh, corrected this uh, gap and, 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 and now it's, it's, it's working perfectly. Um, so uh, also this year, uh, last year, we also introduced a new module, module called predictive retrosynthesis, which is able to predict a synthesis routes based on artificial intelligence and machine learning, but you don't have access to this module. So uh, if you want to know more, I can always tell you about this, but that's not for today. The core philosophy of Reaxis is to deliver you information as quickly and as, as easily as possible, because you will notice that other databases, when you ask a question to the database, mostly will give you a list of the literature that you have to download, find, buy maybe, uh, read, extract data, put them into the tables, into the Excel or any other tools and analyze. And here, as much as possible, Reaxis will try to give you the data, the information, structures, reactions, properties, or any other information that you are looking for. Interface, easy, and, and I hope intuitive, you, you, you will see that. We will go through this uh, today in many, many different examples. We will start in a quick search where you can do either <coughs> search reaxis or create structure drawing in structure editor, or we will also use query builder. I will show you how to use query builder, which is the um, little bit more advanced, uh, 
people think it's complex. I don't think so. I think once you understand the philosophy of Query Builder, you 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 are really well equipped to go and search. And, and most of my cases are actually I use Query Builder because I think it's much more precise, uh, especially for more complex questions. We will go through this. And when you do the search, Reaccess will give you every time a different response because it analyzes your question. It tries to understand your intention. So if you search for a reaction, it will give you reactions on top. But anytime you search for anything, it will also give you the document. So Reaccess contains a database of 16,000 journals, not only Elsevier, but all key publishers. So it also is a great tool for literature. So if you search for a reaction, it gives you reactions. If you search for substances, it gives you substances. If you search for um, for something which is not a structure, not a, um, a reaction, then obviously it will only give you the document. So I think you will see how this works, and this is quite logical. As I said, Reaccess gives you access to the information, and, and that's why we extract information from articles. We extract the, the information and we put them into the specific. So if we find the data on a substance, substance name, we put it in a substance name. If we put, if we find information about substance property, like, I don't know, density, for example, it will put it in a density, right? So you see, for example, solubility, cell diffusion, compressibility. So all this information is extracted and, and distributed to the specific fields. And this is very important because then later in a query builder, you will see, we will use these fields to do the searches. So you have to know which field to use, and then there are more than 500 of them, but I think that will be quite intuitive. So physical data, other data, including uh, biodegradation and other environmental uh, type of information use, quite important. So if you, use, if you search for a practical uh, use of a substance, then here you will find information how it is used already. And here you will mostly find patterns. Uh, you will also find uh, all the other type of information, including isolation from natural product. I have seen there is quite a, a number of projects which are looking at natural products, so isolated, extracted from a natural source, a plant, um, tissue, or, or anything. And then actually, this, this can be found here in, in Reaccess as well. Uh, spectra information, all types of spectroscopy, bioactivities, and so on. So just to summarize and to give you an idea, Reaccess is a database of uh, consisting of many databases. Today we will focus on the orange orange one because the blue one is the RMC Reaccess Medicinal Chemistry. You don't have access to it, and I don't think there are too many projects which are related to biochemistry. Uh, although I think I saw one. We we can touch upon this if you want, and, and I can show you how this works. But in principle, this is a substance database with more than 170 million substances, a property database with more than 500 million experimental properties in more than 500 fields. So these fields is very important because we will use them later for searching, you will see. And chemical reaction database with more than 57 million single and multi-step reactions and also bibliographic database. So we, we will do to today searches, which will be both substance related, reaction related, but also they will be related to information, just information. And then we will be looking at bibliographic records. So I think we will skip this. We don't need to react to the photosynthesis module. What we need to do is we need to go straight <coughs> to the data. So before we use, we, before I go into use cases prepared based on your projects, uh, let me just quickly go through the basic ways you can do search in Reaccess. When you open Reaccess, and I hope you all already tried it maybe, and, uh, and you have some ideas, reaccess.com, you open it, and you, you see that this interface, which is a quick search. Uh, before I start also, uh, I will tell you that you see I am logged in here on the top right, and um, I, I would strongly recommend you to, 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 to set up your personal profile. You, if you, if you don't log in, you will see the button called register. You click on it and it's, you just enter your name and email address basically. And then you create your own profile, which allows you to do a lot of stuff. Uh, you can, you can uh, personalize the interface, but you can also save your results. You can set up uh, search alerts. So many, many different uh, positive things uh, you can do with this. And also when you are logged in, your session lasts longer. If you are using Reaccess as anonymous user, 
your session will last only 30 minutes and then Reaxis might uh, uh, might reset the session and this might be pain painful if you already have done some searches. Uh, also, if you want to export results, you need to be logged in. So this is really uh, easy. It's it's for free, uh, and and but this gives a lot of benefits. So I would strongly recommend you to to create this. And by the way, one profile is working for all as your databases. So if you have already one, maybe in Science Direct or Scopus, you can use it here as well. Or if you set up one here, you can then use it also in Science Direct and Scopus. So. Um, you can use this in, in all SVR databases uh, without problem. Good. So <clears throat> let's start. And uh, of course, I remind you again, if you have any questions, uh, please shout, let me know, put it in chat or just unmute yourself. So search reaxis very quickly, this small field that looks really um, very, very simple, but it's not simple because behind this is an artificial intelligence and it tries to understand our questions. So, what we can do is we can ask basically for anything, um, and it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be a, a, a substance or a structure. It can be anything. You see, when I ask for water pollution, it seems like there is two, more than two hundred twenty thousand articles were entitled "Abstract and Keywords: Water Pollution," and this is taken in a quotation mark, so it means it's a concept, not just the two words separately, which would give us a different result. Actually, it would give us many, many more records, because this would search for all records where water and pollution are, are present, but not necessarily as a concept, but basically two different words. So this wouldn't make a lot of sense. So often, just the first hint already on the start, if you search for a concept, and if Reaxis will not do it, because sometimes it will do it when it matches it with the dictionary called Reaxis 3, if, if Reaxis will not do it, you just use the quotation marks and, 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 and use it and to, to, to narrow down the number of, of, of records by just searching for a concept. And your results in this case, quite easy, right? And we see the documents. Obviously, there is so many documents, you are not able to read them. So first of all, what you can do, you can sort them differently, for example, by relevance, because it's by default. So it's sorted by the publication year, and you see water pollution. Of course, you can see index terms, which are giving you an idea if this article is about your subject, if this is relevant, and you can read the abstract, of course, right? And you have the link to full text uh, because Reaxis is not the full text database, right? Uh, I get this question quite often. Uh, it's an abstract or no, actually this is a factographic database, I call it, because it contains, of course, abstract bibliographic data, but it contains also data and information facts. That's why we call it a factographic database, which is a difference to bibliographic database. And clicking on full text, of course, takes you to a site where the article was published. It gives you the DOI. It will go automatically there, or if you are, if you don't want to wait, you just click on it, and uh, it, it opens the document. And wow, okay, it's in Chinese, not, not bad. Uh, no, it's English as well. Great. So. Uh, because, and then depending on the fact, if you have access to this uh, database, for Elsevier, it will be Science Direct, for example, but uh, university is subscribing to so many databases that the chance that you open the, doc, the full text is quite high, right? So these are the, the records. Let's go back to quick search and just notice, look, watch these uh, algorithms, how the database builds the algorithms, because this was quite simple one, but it will be more and more complex every time we go. Okay, let's do a, a new search and, and, and just to really show you that you can search for anything, uh, for example, heart attack, right? I mean, it has nothing to do with chemistry again, but then you will only find documents. I'm not expecting any substances or anything, but if I will edit it and maybe if I will add a drug or therapy or uh, okay, let's just leave the drug, so you see the documents, title, abstract, keywords, heart attack, and drugs. So now it's more concentrated on, on, on drugs and heart attack uh, articles. So then I'm, I'm expecting that in many of those articles, I will see substances right in this one, right? And, and already here, the chemistry starts. So sometimes the good way to start is to start with a big concept and maybe do it a little bit more exact by adding more words. And you see, I'm already starting to go into chemistry. And from there, I can just click on view details and easily go to a substance record, right? So 
this is um, like this, or I can click here, view details, and go directly to the substance record. So, uh, but we will come to this place in a second. It is now <coughs> a little bit too early. I just wanted to show you that sometimes it's good to start from a wide search and then go into more details. But uh, we will show you how to do a little bit more exact searches. So now coming back towards chemistry, what can we search for? The substance, of course, right? I mean, uh, um, like benzene tetrac. So we can use the UPAC name, of course, no problem. And in this case, you already notice different result, right? I get substances documents, but I also get commercial substances. We, I told you two years ago, we introduced a new module, which is called commercial substances. For each substance, we have commercial availability information as well. So if you need a chemical, you can do it. So if you go into a result set, then we are going to the view of, of chemical substances, right? And here we see our substance, but then we also see different other versions salt isotopes and so on and so on. <clears throat> Normally the most relevant version will be on the top. So you see all the information about the substance, of course, identification, dry likeliness, bioactivity, physical data. So you will see all the physical data here and here is where it starts so that you get the numbers you see. And that's why I'm saying Preaxis is a factographic database because as much as possible, you will get the data information and so on, chromatographic data as well. So you see in gas chromatography is mentioned in this, in this article, right? Spectra information, all types of spectroscopy here, gain data as much as possible and other data as well. And, and you remember I told you about use. So how this substance is used, and for example, it's analyzing nucleic acids in the presence of ion exchange material, ammonia blocking compositions, modifying the hair color, so you see all these funny sometimes uh, types of uses, and these are all patents. You see, these are all patents. Actually with patent, it's quite easy because if you go to full text with patent, it takes you to either SPASnet or US Patent Office, depending on the availability. And obviously these, uh, these sites are open, so no problem to go there and, and read the patent, right? So with patent is quite, quite easy to do. So no worries with that. Let's go back. So I was searching for a uh, substance for a UPAC name, but I can also search for a, a drug name or, or um, like a commercial name as well. Um, Marine, for example, right? And quite easy. It also gives me the substances, giving documents, and giving commercial substances. So again, going here, then I'm going to the uh, substance view. On top of what I was talking about, which is physical data spectra, other data, we also have link to preparations, all the reactions, targets, and, and documents. So if you want to do the preparations, you could draw the reaction, or you could start with the substance and then just go to preparations and see how you can how you can synthesize it, right? And then you have all the reactions, and where possible, you will also have experimental procedure. So this is also extracted whenever we can do it legally or wherever it's possible and whenever it's, 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 it's there, we will extract the uh, experimental procedure, but you get all the information about this. And of course, the link to original text from where it was extracted. You will notice that filters are there as well all the time and filters will be different for different views. So will be different for reaction view, will be different for structure view and different for the literature view, right? And they will be obviously logically adjusted. So in this case, because I'm getting 297 reactions, it's a little bit too many. So maybe I want to uh, limit it. I could limit it by the substructure. I could limit by yield of reactions, so just high yield reactions. I could limit by reagent catalyst. So I only wanted um, the potassium carbonate to be my, my reagent or a catalyst solvent in methanol, in water. But I also can go about catalyst classes. So the whole groups of catalysts. And uh, in this case, I, 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 I always advise to click on view more because view more opens a new window and you can analyze this. But this one is, is in the form of a list, so it's nothing special about it. But in a catalyst classes, for example, I see that this, have, this will have a form of a tree, this filter. So I have, for example, active center, so palladium based catalysts. And, and, and I can choose either all of them or I can choose the selected ones, right? Uh, 
oh, sorry, not this one, this one. Uh, I have organisms, enzymes as well. I mean, enzymatic reactions, quite popular. Heterogeneous catalysts, uh, raisins, for example, and what kind of raisins? Okay, Dobrex, nice. So you see, uh, you can go for whole catalyst classes and also you can go for solvent classes. If you want, for example, to go for green chemistry, and I have seen green chemistry in the projects repeating quite often. Um, so green chemistry, uh, just selecting green solvents, solvents is quite easy. Um, product availability in other databases, all products uh, for purchase, all, all products for purchase. Um, reactant availability, if you can buy all of them. Reaction classes as well, and here if you go view more, you will see all types of reactions. So you can also get an idea about what type of reaction we are talking about. And if you are thinking about the hydrolysis, right, uh, of imines, oxides, or you, you talk about oxidation in this case mostly, and you see the CC bond cleavage, for example, right? So you can easily find this. I mean, use the filters. It, they collect a lot of information, and this is all relevant to your search set. So it also will show you how many rec records you are expecting when you use this filter. So filters are quite useful. If I go to the documents, which I can do here on the top, change to documents or a substance view, or maybe let's first change to the substance view. So there are 305 substances out of 299 documents containing these 297 reactions that we have just uh, had a look at. So if I go to the um, structure view, you see it's different. I, for example, see some parameters, substance classes. This could be interesting. Going to substance classes, functional group classification, ring classification, Richter classification. So I want uh, only the substances with the nitrogen. You see, this is quite a lot and, and I want amines maybe. So if I want all of them, I could go like this or I only want amines and imines and immediate derivatives and just click on link to quite easy. So use filters, they are quite useful and you see it's a lot of, lot of information included into them. In document view, just to show the filters, you see you have different information, right? For example, document type. So what if I only wanted information from patent? No worries, it's easy. What about uh, patent office, journal title, uh, for example? I'm, I'm interested in journal titles, I mean, just tetrahedron letters. Quite easy, right? And substance classes, reaction classes, and so on. So filters are easy way if you start the wide search and then want to narrow it down, it's quite okay. So quick search, just to finish with that, so what else we can do in a quick search? You can search for more, you can search, you can just ask normal human question like solubility of vitamin D3. So here I'm asking about the property, right? So now you see this algorithm gets a little bit more complex. So structure, and I can check if it's correct, actually it's correct, and property solubility. So I also have documents about solubility and vitamin D3. But I want to look into this, into the substance rate. And what's different to the previous substance record view? The difference is here, heat data. Below the substance record, you will see heat data, which means answer to your question, and solubility. So I click on solubility, and you get all the information. You see, so this was really quick. I don't even need to draw the structure or anything. I just asked the question. So now, we can ask different questions. How about uh, asking the question about, <coughs> for example, synthesis of vanillin. So now I'm asking for a reaction, and indeed, reacts is giving me reactions with a query built like this, which is absolutely correct. And I go to results, and I have almost 600 reactions of synthesizing vanillin. Right, and it's quite simple. Of course, if I wanted to build a, uh, a, a synthesis plan and I can go to retrosynthesis or I can do it also here, I have this flask. So I can go and create synthesis plan in, at any stage, in the substance view or here. And I can do either find preparations just to manually select those or create synthesis plan automatically. I have also predicted on because I have this um, retrosynthesis module, but let's not, I will switch it off for the moment. I can edit how 
how I want this synthesis plan to be created, how many steps, how many branches, what's the minimum yield I'm looking for. And basically you create your plans. So it's also quite easy, right? And, and I see all the history of my plans and, and this I also have including predicted, uh, but then I can go to my project and view all those plans. And I can see these are quite simple ones. Um, and I can either view, and I see the topology of this plan. So here is two substances and so on. They can I either go to that review and I get all the information about this, including the experimental procedures, right? And if I want to go on, I can say, I want to add a next step. I want to see how to synthesize this one if I'm not happy with it. So if, I, if it's not a commercially available material, in this case, actually it is, but then I can, select from existing reactions and saying, uh, oh, this one see, looks like, okay, or maybe that one actually is too complex. Let's start with this one. And so you can build and build your plan until you are mom, until the moment you are happy with your starting material, right? And then you can, of, of course, you can check the availability of this material. So click on the shopping basket and you have Sigma Eldridge, Cambridge, Accelerys, but commercial substances is this module I was talking about. So if you click on commercial substances, then you will see commercial suppliers. That's another view where the filters again are relevant to the view. But I see these commercial suppliers and, and, and I can see, and then maybe I can select the different packaging size, or maybe I want a purity, high purity, higher than 95%, for example. And, and you can use the filters, you can filter down the information, or maybe you want to look at the price and select those with the cheapest, the cheapest price. So you see how easy it is. I mean, by just filtering, I'm getting, I'm getting information about this, this compound. So that's quite easy and you can do it quite, quite easy. So coming back again to our quick search. So I think you get the idea. You can um, basically ask about anything. Mm. For electric, I'm looking for materials, right? Materials. So it doesn't have to be organic chemistry, by the way, right? Um, I see also there is quite a number of there is quite a number of projects on on on, on non-organic chemistry and here you see I'm getting substances for properties for electric so um, doesn't have to be doesn't have to be organic chemistry it can be basically anything um, so I mean PKA of Association constant also should work. In this, 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 this search is actually a little bit more complex because the database gets a little bit lost. Now it looks for pharmacological targets, which is not correct. Uh, also targets. So in this case, only the third search seems to be okay. Property is PKA, which makes sense, right? Uh, so sometimes you will see this algorithm will not get the idea completely, but then we have to go to structure editor or to Perimeter to make it by uh, on our own by hand. But in this case, dissociation exponent works quite, quite, quite well. Of course, here in this field, you can also search for a name of the author, John Smith, for example. You see author John Smith, so it's also not bad. And then you will see, of course, the documents. I will not even go to the view. You can search for patent number, for cast number, um, basically, there is no limit. Okay, but sometimes you will notice this, this not this is not working properly. So then you will have to use structure editor. Of course, I will not teach you how to use structure editor. That's a separate course that we will need to do. Uh, but besides of just drawing stuff uh, like in all here, um, what you can also do you can use uh, insert structure from name option. And if you know the nearest scaffolding, the nearest compound. As a palm, which is a drug, right? And you want to look at its uh, compounds which are similar to the azepam. For example, in the place of this uh, metal group, you would want to, to have any group. You would go to, uh, to a generic groups, and then you can have either acyclic, cyclic groups, or you can have any group, right? So if I wanted any, any cyclic group related, uh, bounded here in this, in, this, in this position, this would be my substructure. I could do the substructure, but if I did a substructure search, it would also try to attach any other uh, ligands or, or substituents at any position. So in this case, I keep it as drawn because this is defining my substructure. 
So in this way, I could quickly go and search for compounds which are uh, similar to my compound uh, in, in some some way, but they have, uh, for example, in this case, uh, in this case, aromatic or, or some uh, cyclic uh, cyclic substituent. And you can use many other options here. Uh, of course, these groups, this generics is one group, one way. You can have any atom, any metal, any halogen. Uh, so you can substitute, or you can just draw the compound, uh, like benzimidazole, for example. And if you wanted to see all the structures which contain benzimidazole, you would use the substructure search, right? And then you don't worry. You, you will have all possible, all possible uh, compounds that have the benzimidazole structure in it. So it's like almost half a million compounds, right? So. It's a little bit crazy search, but just just wanted to show you how quickly how quickly we found it. That's not exactly what you would do, but because most probably you would want to control it a little bit more. Um, what you can also do, you can do the negative selection because you can uh, block certain atoms by here. You have uh, lock atoms, for example, and if you wanted the uh, oops, sorry, if you wanted to. To lock specific atoms like this side of the molecule, right? I mean, no problem. Uh, you still have a substructure search, but with certain uh, sites blocked, and then we see much less. So the strategies for searching here are, are really uh, multiple, and, and I will not have time to go through this uh, today. We can do the separate course. Here you have the bonds. Uh, one of the most interesting bonds is this one position variation bond. Uh, maybe let's. Still do benzimidazole, and let me show you this one. So this position variation bond is oh, no, it's not what I wanted. Control Z doesn't work. Okay, wait. Um, I have this the, the um, highlighted all the atoms. So I want to choose. I want to to, to take this position variation bond. And I want to mark the atoms, like for example, these four. And this means it, it, it's actually a metal group, but I can change it to anything, and maybe I'll change it to any. G means any group. So it means only one of those atoms will be substituted. So we'll see all the compounds where only one of those atoms is substituted. To do this search, of course, we need to have S drawn because this is this is defining our substructure. So I, I hope this is this is all clear. Um, what else we can do? Uh, yeah, drawing reactions, of course, obvious. Um, if you have a catalyst or a reagent, draw it above the arrow as well. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's quite easy. I think to sp I have to speed up because we have time is, is really sh getting short and I still have many examples. I, uh, but I really wanted to tell you about this, this, and about the query builder. And we go into examples. Before we go into examples, just how query builder works very quickly, and, and this is really simple. So you remember 500 fields, right? Where are these fields? They are here on the right side. Topics and keywords, identification data, like chemical name, physical properties, spectra information, medchem, you don't have medchem, so you won't see that. Other, which is isolation from natural source, use, and so on. Reaction data, yield, temperature, product, and so on and so on type of reaction and bibliography search, document type, author. So here you can be really exact. If you search for author, you can search for an author. And how to add the field to this working area. This is the working area on the left. Just click on the field and it's added to, to, the, uh, to, the, to, the, to, um, to your search. And by the way, you can add more than one. And if you add the second one, then they are automatically connected to the logical operator. And in this case, but you can change it, you see. So you can put in the author name, you can put the journal title just to find the articles from this author in this journal. But usually we would use either uh, identification data, like chemical name, or maybe even a structure drawing. So I can include structure editor as one of the fields. So I can search for a specific uh, structures and then uh, use some other information like use or catalyst information. And here on top, there are three fields that are really useful. Anything related to the substance is here. Anything related to reaction is here. And anything related to the article. And why these are important? Because sometimes we don't know which field to use. 
And sometimes if you think about substance as a specific uh, type of use, like pharmacological or uh, a special type of a drug or something, then you don't know if this will be in the biochemistry field, if it will be in the use field. So sometimes it's easiest to use this field. So I hope it's clear. We can use as many fields as we want. And let's maybe start with some examples, okay? So I think this will be the easiest thing. So uh, the first project on the list that I have seen, synthesis of air stable NHC transition metal complexes that could be used as a catalyst. Wow, okay, that's like, that's like a huge, huge project. And uh, just thinking about it and you think, how, how, do I, how do I search for it? And actually this is, quite simple in the axis. So let's uh, have some idea of some NHC uh, transition um, metal complexes. So what I will do, I will just draw it and uh, maybe let's use something like this. Uh, we need nitrogens, this is a carbon. We need a metal and a metal, okay? So this will be a metal. And here I want to have either single or double uh, bond. So I will go to offset something. And I want, this is aromatic. Uh, this is single or double. Okay. So I want this single or double, right? And I want to have, to see all the substructures. So I don't know where it will be substituted, but I'm allowing substitutions on, on, on basically any, any, I just want to have a first look where to substitute it. So I'm doing the substructure, easy stuff, okay? I will not spend more time on this. So that's my first field. Now I want to look at synthesis, but I will do it later because first I want to have a look at these compounds. So NHC transition metals complexes that could be used as a catalyst. I, I use any metal, but you can use a transition metal. Of course, uh, you can select them by hand simply from the periodic table as well. But let's use all metal for the moment and see how this works, because I really want to show you the logic of the of the of the query builder. So, uh, so they they have to be used as a catalyst, right? So I could find the field called use somewhere. You remember it was another. By the way, we don't have to scroll for the list. We can search for a field. So just type what you want to search for, in this case, use. And you see, that's my use field. So I'm adding the use field here. I could say find any, to, to find any compounds with this substructure that, are, that have any information about uh, use, any use, but in this case, it's not the case because I'm looking only for use as a catalyst. So then you open fields and open the subfields and these subfields will be different. You will notice for every uh, field. And not the laboratory, it's more use, use pattern, I think. Uh, catalyst. Now, yeah, but catalyst, catalytic reaction, cat there might be different ways of writing it. So actually what I would do, I think I would end with L and I would change this operator to start with. You get the point? So all the words starting with catal, will be found, catalysis, catalytic reaction, catalysis, uh, energy, whatever it is, then I will find it. So that's why also pay attention to this and use these operators. So add the words where they can have different endings and, and or maybe if they also can have prefixes, then use uh, contains. Like, um, I don't know, actually I don't have an idea for catalyst, but for example, when I was searching for uh, um, Alzheimer's disease and I was searching anti-Alzheimer or Alzheimer's, that's why I would use contains. In this case, I think starts with is okay. So this will cover our catalysis, uh, cat no compounds with any information on catalytic um, properties or use. And also I would um, um, use um, the laboratory and, and a catalysis, but it would also, uh, no, sorry, here I wouldn't use, use, sorry, this was my mistake. I would use the field that I just described you, substance properties and comments, because the catalysis may be not only in the use, it can be in any other field. So I would say again this, sorry, my mistake. Um, I was just thinking about this now, and I thought I would use the substance properties and comments field to find catalysis in any field. And then actually I would use the field called use, but, and edit as a third one, 
but I would use this for uh, laboratory use and say air stable, okay? Because I'm looking for air stable uh, compounds that can be used as a catalyst. So you see, I'm building quite a complex query and this, this takes a little bit of thinking, but you will, get, you will get used to this. And once you get the concept and philosophy of this interface, then it's quite easy. So let's see the substances. And here you have a choice what you are searching for, substances, reaction, and documents. So we have 493 substances, right? And then when we find the one that we really are interested in, then we go to preparations, right? And then we have a synthesis, or we click on create synthesis plan, and we create synthesis plan. Uh, I will switch off predicted again. My screen is too small. And you create synthesis plans, and it's still calculating. It, is, it will take a while. Published, view. And here are my, my synthesis plans, right? Here I see there are two steps, and I see the topography of this, and I have table view or tree view. In table view, I will see basically how it runs, and I will see all the details, including the yield and so on. And uh, I can also change to tree view if I want. And my plan is ready. So creating a synthesis plan of first table and NHC, in this case, metal complexes that are used for catalysis, uh, it's done. Well, it's quite simple. And I use Query Builder for this to create this, this query. I could actually maybe modify this and already say I want the reactions. Let's see if this works. This works. Uh, but this time, okay, I'm not searching for substances. Yes, I'm searching for reactions. So you can also do it. But I normally prefer to, because now you will see all the compounds, all the reactions, so it's, it's sort of too much, and you are not able to go first through the compound and check its properties and see if this is the one you want. And then only then, for this only compound, create a, create a, a synthesis plan, because now it will give us lots of because we have like close to 500 compounds for each of them i don't know how many reactions so uh yeah it will take a while so maybe uh, we we'll stop it because this was a little bit too crazy idea i just had it just to show you that it's possible but then if you run it then you you can go and and and, and you know prepare a coffee and then come back and it should be should be ready hope it's clear are there any questions in the meantime i don't hear anything i don't see anything in the chat so it must be clear. Okay, let's delete all, let's clean this, and let's see another example. I was looking at some um, project which was looking at zeolites that can capture, um, or any adsorbent that can capture, um, you know, clean air, clean water, and so on. And I was thinking, uh, just to show you maybe a simple example, how to find zeolites that can capture um, carbon dioxide because I'm now looking into more, uh, you know, inorganic chemistry, like physical <laughs> chemistry project. And adsorption is, is also one of the areas uh, which is, which is, which is um, in, uh, in, in reaxis. So we will look at adsorption, right? Let's adsorb. Adsorption. Oh. So in adsorption, when I open the fields, you see this is, again, relevant and different. So in this case, I will look at the partner, and I will have to define the compound, the substance will be uh, the, uh, you know, attaching to this partner. So in this case, my partner would be zeolites. Zeolites, but again, to have all types of zeolites, maybe I will change this to contains because there are different types of zeolites and different <coughs> ways to name them. And then I need my, my substance that will be uh, attaching to this, right? So for CO2 and generally for inorganic chemistry, the easiest way would be to use the molecular and on the structure. Drawing inorganic compounds is not really working very well, but before, uh, instead of this, we can use molecular formula. I will tell you a little bit more about molecular formula in a second, but in this case, it's simple, right? CO. Just to finish this example and go for substances. So, it will find simply CO2 because I was searching for CO2, but what it will do in addition in heat data, it will give me absorption data. 
And you see now here, we get a lot of stuff. Zinc containing abazite zeolite, FAO zeolite 13X, cesium, cation exchanged forms of, and so on and so on. And, and you can see, and you can see there is a lot of information on adsorption and, and you can use this. I was also once doing this for um, removing um, mercury from water, for example. So you can also do it. So quite, and uh, we were doing this also with, uh, I think titanium dioxide, uh, titanium dioxide um, powdered. Um, so this was also working quite well. So you see just merging two fields and it's quite easy. I, will, I promise to tell you a little bit more about this molecular formula. And this is also interesting field because sometimes there are things that are much easier to be searched by molecular formula than by uh, drawing uh, uh, by, by structure editor. So an idea, the, the best idea I think I have for this is like uh, searching for fullerens. C60 simply, right? I mean, drawing a fulleran would be a nightmare, but here I go for substances and searching for fullerens is the best possible way here. And you get all the fullerens very nice. So that's, that's, that's uh, very easy. So this was the example of uh, adsorption. Let's see what we have next. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, the next project, I found some information about amides with anti-malaria effect isolated from natural source. Okay, so again, natural source again, right? You remember this field, natural source, isolated, natural, natural, let's search for natural. And just to show you here, you can find any compound isolated from anything or show fields and you say from what? Uh, just to give you a funny example, strawberry uh, slide. So what, which compounds are reported in the literature as isolated from a strawberry? Benzaldehyde, okay, let's see. Strawberry, of course. So you see, uh, Again, another way, if you look at, at the compounds isolated from natural sources, uh, that's, that's the field to use, okay? Isolation from natural sources. So, so actually, maybe let's start from the top. Amides with anti-malaria effect. Oh no, why not? We can actually do this uh, natural. Let's do this. So um, natural source, in this case, we don't know what. So there is, we cannot use this field because we don't know which one, or we want to see all of them. So we say, find any, and uh, now anti-malaria or something connected to malaria. So uh, maybe we should use substance properties and comments here. Malaria, 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 yes, malaria, but uh, maybe let's say contains just on the safe side. So this would be all the compounds isolated from natural source and having anything to do with malaria. By the way, you don't need to fill all the fields at the same time. You can go and check step by step what it will be. So now we are just looking at all the compounds isolated from natural source and having something to do with malaria. And it's 1.7, almost thousands. And you see then you have two, two answers. You have use, treating malaria. Wow, I didn't know. The glucosis, okay. And isolated from natural source. And you see, from what it can be extracted. So we already have the first part of the answer. So we go back to query builder, this is there. And now we have to finish with uh, the substance. So we add a structure and we have to maybe draw an amide. And so let's have, oops, and like this. So um, what do we want here? For sure, and uh, the nitrogen, we need an um, oxygen. No. No. And here we will say um, we allow any group or hydrogen because I want to check all possibilities here and one here, so for example, like this. So, I'm saying GH, which means any group or hydrogen, so that I can check any 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 uh, combinations uh, of of such an amide. And uh, yeah, if I want to really that there is a group here, maybe actually in this position, let's have something uh, not an hydrogen. 
transfer to query. So now I'm limiting my search and I have these uh, isolations from natural source, I have malaria, but I also have my substance or, or sub, sub, substructure at least. So now let's see from these 1.7 thousand compounds, 80, have the structure I wanted. No, um, yeah, yeah, that's a paracetamol actually. I think. And isolated from natural source. Wow, oh, okay, not bad. So we have an isolation from natural source, and we see all this you know, this information, um, like use, for example, and you see malaria, right? So, uh, and then you can go on. You can, of course, say uh, maybe you want some other information, or maybe you want to even narrow it further. Um, what if we wanted to say, okay, and for these compounds, which are soluble, have any data on solubility in water, because they have to be soluble in water. So we look for solubility fields. Solubility, and the fourth field, you see, we are really getting complex. And you see how many uh, fields, how much information you can enter. In this case, we just want water. And let's see if of these 80, which of those have information on solubility in water. So we are translating very, very complex research idea into a search. And you see uh, solubility here. And of course we have water. Quite complex and really uh, easy, easy to be done. Okay, no questions so far? You're so silent. Okay, I'm going on. <coughs> I was looking at some substances and there was a structure and the project is about fruits of synthesizing derivatives of a specific structure that were researched to target Alzheimer's disease. Okay, this is, this is, this is what I was uh, referring to, the Alzheimer's disease. So our structure looks like this, uh, what was that? Uh, what was that? Uh, it was like this, and, and like this, and I think I took it from one of the papers. Uh, I'm not sure now, but uh, basically this is following the project, but I just thought I need to be a little bit more specific on what substances these are. And uh, we could put the chlorine here, or actually we could put maybe any, any halogen. This would be a little bit better. Even. Okay. So uh, that would be our structure. And we do the substructure search as well, uh, because we want to see all derivatives uh, of, this, of this structure. And so this would be our first part of the question, the structure. And the second one, of course, would be substance properties and comments. Uh, most probably I would, the field use is the most obvious one to be uh, used here, but just checking if there are no other fields, then it, it makes sense to use the um, substance properties and comments field. And by the way, here I'm using usually contains because this could be anti-Alzheimer, it could be Alzheimer's, depending on how author uh, uh, described this. And uh, yeah, we want to first check the compounds. And uh, this is one way of doing this. Why no results? It could be, there should be results. Uh, it should be okay. And not, uh, Okay, let's see, let's see the reactions, but it should be also working. I was checking this. And looking for reactions, maybe this is a stride search is better here. Okay, 16 reactions, okay. Uh, so you see that our structure is always uh, marked in blue and we have the reactions and we said we wanted the, the green reactions. So, most probably I would go to solvent classes, you remember I showed you, and go for green solvents. And this could be 28 reactions to consider and to look at, okay? So then it's basically ready. Um, good. Uh, 
So this was another example. Uh, one more example, maybe. Um, isolate biologically active ingredients from medicinal plants active on malaria. Ah, okay. This was also another project. So malaria, I think, and other these diseases are quite uh, popular. And um, I think in the project, I've seen some requests to find uh, the chromatographic data as well on it. So um, again, uh, I think the isolation from natural source is the field. So it's a little bit repetitive now, but I think just to help you uh, um, get the idea of how it works, find any. So substance properties and comments, uh, malaria again. Area and maybe let's say things. And we also want to look at some chromatography data. Chromatographic data. And we want to look at, for example, we are on HPLC. So most probably we would use this field. By the way, in any field, you see this small icon on the right, and this is the dictionary of the field. So it will contain the data which is included in the field. In this case, it's quite simple and easy. Sometimes this could be like, especially if there is a numeric values, this will be many, many, many values. So it will be thousands of sub pages. But in this case, it is quite good. And I can select, for example, HPLC, I'm interested in, in gas chromatography, right? So you can immediately see all the records where this information is included. And I will go for substances. So then I'm getting all the information about substance, biologically active substances, active on malaria, isolated from a natural source, and that have HPSC data, H um, HPLC or GC data. And you see this is the use data, and that's malaria. Chromatographic data is there as well. This is GC, and this is HPLC, and that's GC also. What is HPLC? Actually, yeah, it's probably somewhere. Yeah, maybe I should have get rid of these. Okay, let me uh, just uh, go, wait. I will delete it and just say HPLC. You can also type it by percent, of course. And this will also show us HPLC data. So you see, I'm playing with it. I'm not always read, sure how this will come out, but, but don't be afraid. Just play with it, change things. And um, and you will see uh, like chromatographic data, in this case, HPLC data, and you see where it is. And there is no data about it. It's just information. But it's also very valuable because you know where to search for this information. I also wanted to quickly, I know we are now two minutes over time. Let, let's, let's use five, 10 minutes more. I really have only two more examples, I think. Mm, because I really wanted you know, to go away from organic chemistry a little bit and, and go for uh, more, more, more um, material science related searches. And there was another project that was looking at fluorescence uh, sensors based on synthetized, synthesized nanomaterials, for example. Um, in this case, yeah, we, you, you cannot search for any substance. I mean, unless you know the chemical or, or, or some organic molecule that you want to use as a as a fluorescence material. But first, I think we should start from a proper uh, article search and a bibliographic search. So in this case, I would use this title, abstract, and keywords, which is searching in the literature. And by the way, the same field is, is this is this one. This is here. So on the top, we have these most used fields, structure, molecular formula, class number, and title, abstract, keywords. And by the way, you can use the same field as many times as you want as well. So. For a typical text searches, where you really want to make a very, very uh, concrete search, then this is the way to do it. So um, I would search for like uh, fluorescence sensor. Okay. And I would want to do this as a uh, concept. That's why I use a quotation mark or uh, oops, okay. why it has disappeared. This and, and I also want to look for sensors. Sometimes it's 
I could use also sensor sensors or put in the quotation mark here as, as a additional letter that could be searched, but I think that's the better. So this or this, so I need to change it to R. And by the way, what you also can do, you can group fields and you group fields in a very easy way. You just take the field here on the left side and you drag it. You see, I drag it over another field and I created a group. And the group means it's like a parenthesis in mathematics. It means before you go to this field, first do this, this or this, and only then ends something else. And this else is nanomaterial, right? Nanomaterial. And in this case, because it's just one field, I will say it starts with nanomaterial, nanomaterials, does not matter. So this should be now okay. And uh, I would then go for documents, right? So here you have a choice what you want to see. And this is 142 documents that talk about fluorescence sensors and so on. And then obviously from there you go to substance view and then you look at the substance view and see if there is a substance that is potentially, um, um, it's described in the article as potential uh, substance for um, fluorescence sensor or any other type of use and, and so on. So uh, in this case, you will see, uh, this is like fabrication and application uh, of these sensors. And if you knew part of the structure, for example, you wanted to have part of the structure, you could also add a part of the structure. If you wanted a specific uh, part like, like this, uh, then we could add a structure editor, you know it very well. Let's, let's try this and and try if this will make sense. So I look for any substructure of this. Right. So now my list should be much shorter. It's only two substances. So that's the one I had looked at before, right? And you have any resin as well. So uh, you see how easy it was, right? And uh, to look for fluorescence sense based materials. And I started from the article actually, and then look at the substances, but I can still look at the documents and first check these two documents uh, where these substances are, are mentioned, right? And, and this is the article I was, I was first looking at, right? And, and, and that, that's my substance actually. That gave me the idea to search for this compound. So you can really build it step by step. The last example, and then I give you a floor for some questions because I see you are very silent. Uh, graphene datum quantum dots. Wow, okay. This is, oh no, I have two actually more. Just this is a quick one. Graphene, this is GQDs, graphene quantum dots, sensors again. So I think you will see this is quite easy uh, as well. Um, I actually didn't know this term at all, and so I learned this. Uh, so GQD, yeah, this is GQD, uh, graphene quantum six sensors and substance properties and comments sensor, okay. And try to see what happens. And we will either look at like this and there will be some information, although this is, I think, giving you additional information and, and you have to look into this. So I think, in this case, I would just look for articles. I will look for documents. Because starting from documents give me full review of almost 100, 200 documents that talk about GQD. And then from there, going to substances, going to reactions and, and seeing what I can do with this, right? So first giving me an overview and then going to the details. Really last example, surface characterization in XLD, X-ray power diff diffraction for wastewater analysis. Um, wow, okay, this is quite quite a subject. And again, I would use the same fields, title abstract keywords, most probably, uh, and maybe even two times. So I was looking at X, X, R, D, and you, by the way, you can also put a couple of X, R, D, S as well. So you can just use the, the semicolon and use the uh, multiple entry points. And uh, here I want to use wastewater. And again, that's a concept, so I will use the quotation marks. So first I would start with the documents. <coughs> and then I would go to, uh, to the um, 
the literature, there is a beautiful, uh, the beautiful filter called index terms. It's either a list or it's a reaccess tree. The list gives me an idea what is this group of articles all about? And of course, it's about X-ray uh, absorption, surface diffraction, kinetics, and so on. But even better to use is this one. And I really suggest you use this index terms reaxis tree. So you can really look into reaxis tree, how the information is organized. And here you have to click on view more to really see the power of it. And then uh, you can look, for example, at physical chemical analysis methods, right? And, and spectroscopical analysis and so on. X-ray spectroscopy, and uh, you can look at different ways, or Raman spectroscopy, and so on. And you can really uh, only find the articles where uh, X-ray fluorescence or whatever is the spectroscopy. Of course, you can also look at physical chemical properties as well. So like uh, substance spectroscopy as well. And here you have as well all the, all the details. Uh, or you can look at quantum, uh, sorry, at chemical transformations as well, reaction kinetics, uh, reaction class, named reactions, and so on. So you have lots of information, and you can you can filter the information based on uh, on uh, on the filters. And then this filter is really doing the job, and it's really about XRD, wastewater management. And so it's really the you know instead of looking for millions of articles, you have 162 as as your first shot and then you can uh, try to go and, and, and minimize it and, and, and filter it by whatever else you want and, and see what's included in these articles. So this would be my advice. Okay, as, as I thought, I'm 10 minutes above the uh, planned one hour time, but I think that's enough at this stage. And I think I showed enough examples. Now, do you have any questions or what's your reaction or do you need more? <laughs> um, tell me. No comments? Uh, thank you, Piotr. I think this was very valuable. It will be very good if you can send us the recording link sure we will definitely have a follow-up training session somewhere during this year and i always know that you tell students that if they need help that they can contact you of course so thank you very much and i'm sure the students will also express the gratification so we can end this session today and we'll be in contact again Hendrik will now take over and also show them a little practical application of what you have taught us today but for today then we say goodbye and all the best there in Poland thank and thank you very much Thank you. And that's my email address again, right? So please feel free to contact me anytime. Okay, I'm going. Okay, okay then it's goodbye so from us. Stop recording. Yes.